Welcome back to the Object Stacking and Packing tutorial series. I'm your host, Thomas Tobin. If you haven't seen the previous chapters, I recommend going back to find them. This final chapter, we look at simulation and another interesting use of the workflow shown. Hope you enjoy. First thing we're going to do to make simulation work is we want to make sure we go to this part of the graph, just below the attribute transfer 6. We're going to put a group node down. And I'm going to enable grouping the ground props. And this is going to be a point group. Connect that in. So just going to check. When you middle click, you can see our ground props it now has a second group called group 13. I'm going to name this group active. Next thing I'm going to do is just make some space. From our active meshes, we're going to put a split node down. And the split is just going to say, is it active or is it not? Let's see which is which. Our left side are our non-active. So this is our base layer. And the top will be the meshes that we're going to simulate on, basically. From here, I'm going to create a attribute create. Attribute create. And I'm going to name this attribute active and set my value to one. And then I'm just going to add some velocity and this can be exposed uh, later on. So the first thing we're going to do is put in at velocity is equal to direction and we'll make a channel for that. And then our velocities channel uh, multiplied to equal to the channel boost times a random point number. So when we introduce a boost and we can set a initial direction for this, for each point that we run over, look at this. We have a velocity attribute right here, and it is adding in the x and the y and the z uh, the different part of kind of the direction is what we're doing. The next thing we have to put down is a RBD bullet solver. Connect that into the first input on the graph, and then go back to scene view. Now we need to unpack our second part of the split node. So just here, I'm going to take this, put it on the left hand side, unpack, and this is going to be our collision geometry that we're um, colliding off of. So as it blows the pieces off of these top meshes, that it can then intersect with them and we'll have some unique interactions. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect this to the fourth input, collision geometry. And we also need to make sure as they fall off these boxes that they don't fall through the floor. So I'm going to put down a object merge node and I'm going to grab, just scrolling back up, our object merge for the transform to. So I'm going to merge this in and you can see this is grabbing the entire box. And we can put down a grid node. And the problem with this is if this ever moves or changes position, we want the grid always to be on the ground floor, basically. So I'm going to make this grid and I'm going to put down, I'll make it larger just in case, a match size node connecting the grid to the geometry to move. And we're going to be matching the bounding box of our object merge six. And we just have to set the justify y to min, so it's always being placed on the bottom. Then we can merge this into our unpack. So I'm going to select these two nodes, holding alt and dragging, and we've merged. And just going to override that link now. So now we have our collision geometry, which is the ground floor and our ground props that we had selected in our feedback loop. On the RBD solver, we're almost there actually. I'm going to set my time scale to go a bit faster just so it happens um, a lot quicker. So they fall off and they settle quicker. We're going to go into the advanced tab and the output and make sure we transfer our orient back over. So this is essential for when we actually instant these points that they still have the orientation from this uh, solve and transfer to geometry. I'm going to connect out the output, the first one, to a time shift node. And this is going to allow me to skip time by however many frames. And again, I would probably expose this just so you can 
in engine vary how much we're simulating by. So my first test, I'm going to put 100. Break that reference. Put in 100. So now it's simulating 100 frames ahead of time. And if we template this against our collision geometry, you can see it's either on top, it's laying over, bouncing. So we're having collisions as expected here. And the final thing I want to do is just in case it does fall through the ground, I want to clean up any meshes that uh, glitch through because sometimes you'll find with the bullet solver that the pieces will fly or they'll go too far. I'm going to put down a bound node from our add velocity. And so we're grabbing those top pieces. You could do this actually before the split as well. Grabbing all of that jump tree. And then I'm going to put down a transform node. And on our pre trivets, I'm going to do again the dot dollar sign CX, dollar sign CY, and dollar sign CZ. So now as we scale up this box, it's just going to be around the center point here. And I'm going to expand just in case it blows a little farther in any direction. And I'm going to connect my time shift to a group node. And I'm going to group off, just keep in bounding regions, bounding object. We have to change our point group to be points. And your second input is the bounding object. So we're connecting that from our bound node. And I'm going to put down a blast and put delete non-selected. And this is our should name this better. I'm going to blast away that. So we're keeping the same amount of points in this example right here. Nothing's being blasted away. That's pretty much it for your simulation. Now you can just expose into your HDA, your time scale, and your time shift. So if we want to add velocity, we can go back to our add velocity node. You can change this up. We can say boost is equal to 30. So we're adding a bit more wind. And just to force the refresh here, you can turn on and off time shift. You can see they're being thrown a lot farther. And these pieces in the air are going to be blasted away. So we're just keeping anything on the ground. The final thing you need to do is merge these back together. So we're going to merge our time shift with our ground truth. So that is on the split, it's our first input. So now you have your pieces. There are a few in the air. I would probably run out the time shift a bit further. There we go. So now they're all grounded. And all we have to do now is connect our sim line to this end of the graph. So if we enable simulation and you have this switch exposed as part of the HDA, now all of a sudden all your pieces are knocked over. Go to Unreal. You can see it's working perfectly. It's dropping boxes down, it's colliding with them, we're getting a bit of collision. And if you really want to quickly change any parameters, you just adjust that attribute wrangle. So if we increase our add velocity to something like, this is going to probably be too much, but 16. And I go back to the Unreal instance, we're getting a completely different version. Again, probably too far, because now our ground is through the floor and we're copying pieces. That pretty much concludes the tutorial series. I just wanted to quickly show some inspiration in different other ways you could use the tool. In this example here, we're starting off with a wall. Now you don't have to do vertical stacking, you can do stacking off of um, vertical substances, for example. So if we start off with a wall with UVs, we can then try and pack and fit our geometry, say bricks, for example, along the wall. If we're choosing, again, say the, the highest pieces along the wall, so these would just be random pieces you're choosing, you could then copy along poster boards, for example. So in the end, you automatically, now not very detailed or well done in this example, but you can see how you can very quickly stack original objects and build off of them. This could be pipes. In this example, it is sheets of poster paper that's just randomly scattered along the wall, again, using all the same types of nodes, and it's just different ways of implementing this type of logic. So I hope to see some unique interpretations of this tool and where it will kind of grow into. Thanks so much for following along. Hope you learned a few interesting workflows and excited to see your work online. Talk to you soon.